I'm speaking with Russell Means of the Lakota Nation. And uh, Russell, my question, first question has to do with the severity of the weather event that's happened out there. I've heard that several thousand telephone wires are down and uh, as a result of the snow. Can you give us a little bit of an indication of uh, where things stand and how serious it actually is? Well, it's uh, more serious than a few wires. It's 8,000 telephone poles snapped and consequently have to be replaced, and the electricity went uh, went out over a, uh, a 1,600 square mile area and the Cheyenne River Sioux Indian Reservation. The severity coupled with the blizzards that came in the below zero temperatures have caused many people to die, not only of exposure, but of... Uh, complications from sugar diabetes. As you may or may not know, diabetes is, a, is an epidemic on Indian reservations in this country. And in the rural areas of, the, of Sioux country, um, these reservations are very isolated, and they have uh, buses and, and their own cars, and their relatives' cars, to, to take them into dialysis treatment. Well, many people have died because they couldn't reach the dialysis. And many people have died of heart attacks and freezing, like I said, exposure. So the 8,000 poles were my daughter, whose home is like about uh, 200 miles away from me on the Pine Ridge Sioux Indian Reservation. She called me up asking for my uh, generator, but my generator had been stolen. So everyone, she was without heat or electricity, uh, and so was the entire reservation for a minimum of five days. There are still people up there that do not have electricity restored. So then they're way out. Now the roads are either gravel or very shoddy uh, black blacktop, we call it, uh, asphalt highways, two lane. So there are rural roads that the, uh, even the road clears of snow removal equipment can't get out there because of the drifts. And now, um, now it's, hopefully, it's going to get above freezing supposedly tomorrow. And if it doesn't, well, the situation remains the same. It's very dire. Uh, the towns up there where the white people live they have snow removal equipment. They have uh, access to emergency gear and emergency equipment. But those are very small towns, very small. Um, square mile, two square mile, three square mile towns. So uh, it's dire not only for, uh, for the sick people, but for the healthy people also. So I would, you know, the Bureau of Indian Affairs doesn't have any snow removal equipment. The tribes usually have maybe three, but uh, more often just two. But like the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation has two for a 1,500 square mile reservation. And now to put that in perspective, I've heard that that's about the size of the state of Connecticut? Yeah, it's, um, it is. It's about half the size of the state of Connecticut, the Pine Ridge Sioux Indian Reservation. Right. The, um, the Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation is even larger and uh, much more rural. They're in the center of the state of South Dakota, right along the Missouri River. So it's, uh, they only have one uh, highway that goes completely through it. So it's, it's, it's not a pretty situation. Not at all. You mentioned, um, the, the, aside from the lack of, of snowplow and removal, that there are also some health issues related to people who have been stuck in their homes for a long period of time. Can you give me a bit of information about that? Well, like I said, the sugar diabetes problem is, is epidemic in Indian country all over the United States especially western United States, but it's, uh, I mean, severe epidemic. And those on dialysis are, uh, it's also an epidemic. So it's, it's and di uh, sugar diabetes feeds into heart disease and high blood pressure. So all three of those combined make it pretty, 
pretty lethal when we get these storms. So um, that's uh, really the the primary issue is that the dia dialysis and heart conditions. Um, so it's it's deadly out here. Absolutely. Um, tell me what it is that that would be of 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 of, of greatest need and help right now out there in that part of the world. Well, what we need is the American people to demand that the Congress of the United States discontinue its genocidal programs on Indian people, and and I mean genocidal, and it's planned genocide. And I, I'm not a raving maniac. I live here, right on the Pine Ridge Sioux Indian Reservation. So, uh, come out, come on out, uh, the whole Congress, come on out and check. But it, we definitely need the funds. The Bureau of Indian Affairs needs the funds. The tribes need the funds. Just for snow removal and emergency equipment. That would save lives. Then we need adequate health care to get us off the forced diet the Agricultural Department puts us on with commodity foods. And we need that revamped. We need decent, nutritious food. But we're force-fed, you know, and... and the economics, if we're allowed to utilize our land without the rules and regulations of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, then maybe we can pull ourselves economically out. But people don't understand. Congress doesn't understand. You don't understand that the Bureau of Indian Affairs has a lock and key on our land. It's called tr allegedly called trust responsibility. What a laugh. At any rate, it is not... It is not conducive to economic development, so that's why we're continually poor. And then those small reservations that have a football field for a reservation, they, they're the ones with the casinos. Now, we're stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. The Cheyenne River doesn't have a casino. Our reservation has a casino, but it's the only one in the country that loses money. So, you, you know, it's, it's, it's manifest, the genocide that's going on here. That's what people can do. Stop the genocide. Well, he's Russell Means. He's the head of the Lakota Nation. Russell, thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll talk again I'm sh the soon, Republic I'm sure. The Republic of Lakota. The Republic of Lakota.